Good morning, everyone. Um, today we'll be doing a second chapter from economics, like continuation of our previous class, sectors of the Indian economy. So before we go into chapter, let's recapitulate what we had studied earlier. Okay. So we had studied about the sectors. Now uh, we had studied about three sectors. Now the first one is primary. First one is primary sector, and second we studied about secondary. And third one was tertiary sector. So in primary sector, what did we learn was what did we learn was Primary sector, it is related with natural activities, okay? When we exploit any natural resources and when we get the product, that comes under primary sector. All those agriculture, farming, mining, okay, dairy, this comes under primary sectors. As it is re uh, mostly uh, related with agriculture, so that's why it is known as agricultural sector also. And then we studied about secondary. In secondary sector, the manufacturing process goes on here. Okay, like um, example I had given about cotton. Now, cotton comes under primary sector. Now, in order to make thread, okay, cotton has to go through some manufacturing process. So, that comes under secondary sector. Now, when we talk about tertiary sector, tertiary sector is like a tertiary sector, it is known as a service sector also. Because tertiary sector, they do not produce any goods, okay. Uh, tertiary sectors, they, it helps both these sectors, primary and secondary sector, whatever goods has been produced, okay, whatever goods has been produced, they take it to the uh, market or they reach uh, the products to the consumers. Now, through the ways of um, like uh, trucks or um, trains, okay, everything they transport and then they uh, bring it to the market or sometimes uh, we have to keep it into godowns. So, that comes under tertiary sector. So, in our previous class, we had uh, learned about primary, secondary and tertiary sectors. Now, today we will learn the next topic in your book is comparing these three sectors. So, comparing the three sectors. Three sectors means primary, secondary and tertiary. So, how are we to compare? How can we know? Okay, which sector is producing more and in which sector there is less? Now, we all know that these sectors, they produce a large number of goods and services. And there are many people who are working out here, okay, many people working out here in order to produce some goods and services. And now the next thing is, how can we know how many goods are being produced and how many people are working in this, in each sector? Okay, how many people has been working here or how much of goods are being produced in each sector? And then next, uh, next thing it uh, will be like in an economy, what, how much contribution is given from each sector, okay, uh, it might be like primary and secondary sector, uh, they might be producing a large uh, number of goods and services, and when we come to tertiary, they might not be producing as much these two sectors are producing, okay. So, the contribution of primary and uh, secondary towards the economy, it might be more, and tertiary, it might be less. Now, out here, we will be comparing and then we will be studying, okay. So now, the next topic is, how do we count the various goods and services and know the total production in each sector? How can we know that one sector is producing more? How can we compare, can we compare these three sectors? Now, it might be like a uh, many products are produced in India, isn't it? When we talk about computers, cars, uh, furniture, like tables, chairs, there are so many things, bags, shoes, isn't it? Many products are produced. So how can we count them in numbers? Can we count them in numbers? So many factories are there. How are we to count them? So in order to solve this problem, okay, in order to solve this problem, 
the counting of numbers of the goods and services the economist uh, they came up with the solution like instead of instead of counting the numbers okay the economist they came up with the solution only the value of goods and services are to be counted only the value of goods and services are to be added now when we talk about the numbers numbers are not to be counted numbers are not to be added but only the value only the valuation of the goods and services to be added now when um, we talk about value in order to understand this i'll be giving one example okay um now let's say for example with uh 10000 10000 kg of wheat has been produced okay 10000 kg of wheat has been produced now we will not be taking into account this 10000 kg of wheat okay but at how much it is being sold for example it is being sold at rupees 8 per kg 8 per kg so its value will be 10000 into 8 will be rupees 80 1000 so the total value of wheat to, total valuation of wheat is rupees 80000 so we will be taking the value of wheat in rupees okay in rupees that will be that means contribution of wheat contribution of wheat towards the economy contribution of wheat towards the economy is rupees 80000 I hope you are understood we are uh, we will not be taking into account the numbers but we will only be taking the value of goods and services uh, that also in rupees okay now in order to understand this why did economist uh, uh, why did they say that we will not be taking numbers into account but we will only be taking value of goods okay now we can see like there are various products there are, um, there are many um, like different products are there isn't it now for um, first i give example of wheat now in order to understand i'll be giving another uh, uh let's take example of computers okay now look here i give example of wheat now uh, wheat is another product now when we talk about computer it's another now let's say 10 computers has been produced okay 10 computer has been produced and it has it is being sold at rupees 40000 40000 per product okay now only 10 computers are produced now when we compare it to wheat uh, the um, production of wheat it is more it is 10000 okay now the value of uh, computers it will be Uh, they will differ from each other because when we calculate this it will be it will be 4 lakh that means the value of computer is more than value of wheat do when uh, if we have to count it into numbers uh, wheat has more when we compare it to computer so only the valuation of goods and services will be added towards the economy so out here valuation of computer towards the economy will be rupees 4 lakh so in the same way if you all go through a book later on you all can see they have given example of uh, coconut okay 5000 coconut has been produced and it has been sold at rupees 10 that means the total valuation valuation of coconut is rupees 50000 so now out here we understood only the value valuation of the goods and services are to be added to the economy now while adding also now while adding this uh, the value also we need to be very careful while adding we have to take some precaution now while adding also we need to add only the final goods and services now what is this final goods and services now what does this word final means okay now while adding we know that we have to add only the value of the goods and services but while adding also the value of goods and services we need to add only the final okay <coughs> now uh, okay uh, final 
Um, so, in order to understand this final goods and services, I'll be giving one example. Okay, uh, let's say a farmer sells uh, wheat to flour mill. Okay, flour mill at rupees ten per kg. He'll be selling uh, to flour mill at rupees ten per kg. Now, this flour mill. Uh, what we will, uh, what they will do is they will grind the uh, wheat and then they will sell it to biscuit company. They will sell the flour to biscuit company. They will sell the flour to biscuit company at rupees twenty per kg. Okay, twenty per kg. Now this biscuit company, what they will do is they will add some oil and uh, sugar and they will come up with the product of biscuit they'll come up with the product of biscuit and they'll be selling at rupees 50 okay and they'll be selling at rupees 50 so this is known as final product this is known as final goods now this product it is ready for consumers now the product that reaches the consumer it is known as final goods it is known as final product so out here biscuit is the final product now it has gone through some processes and then finally the biscuit has been made and the consumers they can buy this product when the product reaches the consumer it is known as final product now out here the in, um, value of intermediate goods will not be added now what does this intermediate goods mean now, what does this intermediate goods mean? Now, out here, intermediate goods are wheat and flour mill. Okay. Now, these two things are intermediate goods. Because intermediate goods means while um, uh, making the final product, okay, while making the final goods, the process it has to go. Whatever things that were used in middle, okay, that is known as intermediate goods. So, while adding towards the economy only the value of final goods will be added but the value of intermediate goods it will not be added only this rupees 50 will be added towards the economy but this one it will not be added why because it has already been added it has gone through process okay this man uh, he sold to flour mill and flour mill he sold to biscuit company and biscuit company he also kept some profit along with himself and at last the final product he's selling at rupees 50 so the intermediate means the um, uh, middle process which it goes through that is known as intermediate and the value of intermediate goods will not be added because it has already been added in the final goods now again if we start adding it separately it will be very difficult like adding of wheat amount of wheat in different way and amount of flour um, flour mill different and again when we talk about biscuit again we have to add in different but out here when we add towards the economy okay when we add towards the economy we will be adding only the final goods and services only the value of final goods and services okay now we move to the next one that is uh, so we um, talked about uh, value okay valuation of goods and services only the valuation of goods and services are to be added and dot, uh, and that's also taking into account we have to be very careful while adding we need to take only the value of final goods and services now the value of final goods and services produced in each sector during a particular year provides the total production of the sector for that year so um, uh, when we talk about value and when we talk about final goods and services then we come to know about the production um, the, um, production in that sector production in each sector how much production has been done of uh, how much product um, product products has been produced in each sector okay of uh, goods and services now and um, and the sum of production in the three sectors gives what is called gross domestic product. Now, all this we studied about value and then um, of final, uh, of final goods and services. Okay, the adding of all these uh, um, final goods and services it is known as gross domestic product, which is uh, in short we call it as GDP. Okay, the um, value of um, the valuation of goods and services and the final um, 
and the final goods and services. Okay, when we add all this, um, it is known as gross domestic product. But we are only talking about final goods and services. We don't add uh, value of intermediate goods and services. Now, for example, uh, let's uh, take, um, so for example, let's uh, primary, uh, secondary and tertiary, okay. Now, uh, the primary, they got a tree, okay, and they sold it to secondary at rupees 100. They sold it at rupees 100. And what did the, the secondary do is, uh, they uh, they made some furniture and then they sold it to uh, second tertiary at rupees 200 and this tertiary sector what did they do is they sold it at rupees 500 they sold it at rupees 5 um they sold it at rupees 500 that means this is the final product at how much it has been sold okay and this too will be counted as intermediate goods the amount out here, it will be known as uh, intermediate value. Okay, it will be known as intermediate goods. Uh, because we will be only taking this 500. We will be only taking the value of final goods and services. Now, uh, primary also, they have got some profit. And secondary also, they got some profit from here. And tertiary also, they got some. And then it has reached to the consumers consumers now this is the final this is the final product so now out here the sum of production in the three sectors gives what is called gross domestic product so this is known as gross domestic product when we add uh, from all these three sectors now while adding uh, it does not mean how you all add okay like uh, primary 100 secondary 200 and tertiary 500 so how much will you all get 800 that is not the way. I have already said the value of intermediate goods, it will not be added because it has already been added in the final product and the goods has been sent to the um, market or it has reached the consumers. Now, what is the role of GDP? Uh, through GDP, what do we come to know is uh, if our GDP, um, through GDP we know how big our economy is okay how big our economy is and whether our economy is growing or not and uh, how is our nation doing okay and then if GDP is increasing then we come to know that our economy is becoming stronger and um, there's of uh, the income are also uh, increasing if GDP is incre increasing we come to know that incomes are also increasing so this is known as gross domestic product so gdp means um, the valuation or the total of all um, value of all the goods and services um, all the final okay all the final value of goods and services and when we add them we get uh, gross domestic product now it will be the um, uh, role of the central government ministry okay they have to uh, measure they have to take all the um, they have to take into account all the total production of a country and then they will measure, they will calculate and then they will take out the um, take out GDP. Okay, this much for today. We will continue in our next class.